Hello, today I want to show you how to enhance a list of HTML elements to allow for navigation like this, to use your arrow keys to go around it quicker than just tabbing from one to the other and back. The first thing we need here is a proper HTML structure, in this case a list with buttons inside. And this means several things. It means first of all that we can now take the keyboard to go through that list with tab and shift tab. The other thing means that we have a proper structure already in our HTML which allows us for styling and making it more obvious what's going on. And first of all, of course, creating the grid that you, you saw in the beginning. For this, we need a few styles. First of all, we need to make sure that there is a very distinct difference between a keyboard access and a non-keyboard accessed element. So HTML browsers put a uh, put a uh, border around these kind of things, which is good, and you shouldn't try to suppress them. But it's much better if you have a proper structure that shows people that something is happening when they are actually on the current element with their keyboard. Board. So first of all, what we're doing here is just a bit of housekeeping, putting like a font face in there and putting colors on the body. Then we make sure that the list and the uh, the list items don't have any margin and padding and no list uh, style. That way we don't have these little dots that you normally see on a UL and an LI. And then we just float the list items. That one allows us to create a grid. Nowadays you can also use other things for that, like Flexbox, but uh, floating worked in the past and it's also backwards compatible to older browsers. We give the list a width and we now start the styling of the buttons. First of all we need a color and a background color and these should have a good contrast so you can actually read what's on the button. And then we start taking uh, setting, it, setting it a width, in this case 40 pixels width and height. And we give it a padding of um, a font size of 20 pixels so that way you can actually quite read it nicely and we give it a padding of 5 pixels so all in all this means that our margin of 5 pixels so this way it means every list item is 50 by 50 pixels because 2 times margin plus width and height is 50 pixels as we defined the ul as 250 pixels we now have a grid of 5 by 5 elements we give it a border radius of 50 and 50 that way we make it round and on the focus style, now we turn it around. We change the background to the foreground and the other way around. And that way it's very, very obvious that when you with your key on that current uh, button, that it's actually a thing that you, can, uh, that you can interact with. So if we now reload this, you can see that we now can go through it with tabbing and with shift tabbing, we can go back. But that's not good enough. We now want to add a bit of JavaScript to make this happen and make it better. This is important to understand that this is progressive enhancement here. So when this JavaScript fails, and JavaScript fail because of all kinds of reasons, we, we don't have a problem anymore. We can still tap through the list. We didn't promise the end user anything that is not there when JavaScript fails. And that's a very important aspect of JavaScript. The first thing to do with JavaScript is get a handle on the list itself. We can use document query selector for that. Or you can even use uh, uh, get elements by tag name or whatever you want. But query selector is so useful. Please use it. Every browser supports it now. We now that get a list of items inside that list. So these are all the buttons that we want to navigate through. I started to think about that I have to do a lot of navigation in the DOM to do this kind of functionality. But all we needed to do was actually go through the buttons forward and backward and find out how, how many to jump to go up and down in the grid. We loop now through all these buttons and put an index attribute on the element itself. So now, uh, instead of navigating the list of, of buttons all the time, it's, uh, it's much easier to do it that way. Now we have a way to know which button that we currently pressed is what part of that collection. So instead of looping through the collection every single time, this makes it much, much easier. So we try this out by console logging it right now. So the third button in the list should give us three as the count. And if I now open this in the browser, you can see that it actually happens. So there's a three down there. We know now that these count attributes or properties have been added to the elements and we can use them later on. The main way to give an element HTML uh, a keyboard access is to do an add event listener on key up or key down. Key down if you want to get it faster, key up if you want to make it safer, and give it a, a, a handler. So in this case, a function called handle keys, and the handle keys function, of course, needs an event. And then we can start giving the functionality of our 
uh, of our keys. I'm really bad at remembering what kind of key values each key has. So I normally do this when I create something. I just do an event handler on there and use the console and start typing to realize what the different key codes are. Now, instead of doing a, a massive list of if statements or doing a switch statement, I like to create a lookup table. So this way we don't need to do an if statement reading each, every, each and every key and have a, a lot of code for each of them. But we just have an object that says, okay, if that key is pressed, return that value. Because in essence, that's what we need. So in this case, I just create an object and say like, okay, if it's 38, which is the arrow up key, go five elements up. If it's 40, which is down, go five elements down. If it's 39, then go one element uh, to the right. And if it's uh, if it's 37, go one element to the, to the left. And that way we start navigating out there. So I now copy that back into my code and I have my lookup table. And that way I saved myself a lot of testing which key has been pressed and which uh, which functionality we want to have right now. So the next thing now is to understand which key has been pressed. So we say the key code is event key code of the, uh, of the event object that came from the listener. And then I just check if codes exist with that key, go, key code. That way I only act on, um, on the, arrow function, uh, the arrow keys. I don't act on any of the other keys and maybe override functionality that people wanted to have. So trying this out now, I can now start uh, pressing all kind of keys on that list, but the only ones that do anything are the arrow keys. So that's exactly what I want. The next step then is to understand what we're doing with this. So I need to know which button I'm on. The event target gives me that. So the event tells me which element was the one that fired the event. In this case, it can only be the button because it's keyboard accessible. Then I check if the element has a count. And that means that if the count in the list has been defined, I know it's a button that I clicked on and not the, uh, that I, uh, I interacted on, not the list itself. And then I start to go through the items. So I say the count, which is the index of the array, plus the value that I got back from my uh, lookup table. So in this case, I get codes and I get the key code that I read right now. And that one would give me minus five, plus five, um, one or minus one. And I just check if the item exists, or that means if the button exists, and then I focus it. This is important to make sure that if you hit, for example, left on the last, last element, or if you hit uh, left on the first element, or, or right on the last element, you don't have that mistake. So now I can go through that list and I can actually navigate it. But there is a problem there. All items is not defined because I actually called it items this time and not all items. So I just rename these two to all uh, to items and then we should have a go. And there you can see now we have a keyboard navigation that allows you to go there faster than just by tabbing forward and backward. And this is all the code that was necessary to do it.